black men are just complete fucking failures. I mean, like I said before, we're just too dumb, uneducated, broke, we're bummy, we're living with our mamas. We just ain't got no fucking sense. And black women are just so excellent, awesome, educated. They are running laps and circles around our black asses. And we just can't do anything about it. Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Raquel Annette, if you're new here. For the rest of Kel's crew, thank you guys for tuning back in. As you see today, we have a little bit of a, um, I would say a rant. A rant. Slash story time. Oh god, black women in their story times. I love it. Um, Meg, the stallion, like, what the heck is going on? It was a trigger for me because if you guys didn't know, I was in an abusive relationship that I don't really talk about, but we're going to touch on that a little bit today. I'm, I'm going to be honest, because I, I really don't give a fuck. Because I'm just wild like that. I'm just crazy like that. Um, I, I don't give a fuck about black women and domestic violence. I don't, I don't give a fuck. You guys can ignore educated lanes. You can ignore the nice guys all you want. You even brag about it. I don't want to hear anything about your domestic violence bullshit. And how Ray Ray and Pookie or the, the niggas that every girl wanted to be with hit you up, beat you up, or did this or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I, I really just don't care. Because I'm so tired of the world having to stop and give you guys some type of pity and praise for being self-inflicting victims of your own bullshit. It's annoying as fuck. If you're interested in seeing how I came up with this look and what I got to say, you're more than welcome to continue on watching. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. <laughs> Hello, mate. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in as per- Wow. Wow. <laughs> Oh God! I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that one coming, man. I did not see that one coming. Th that that hit me, man. That hit me fucking hard. Is is, it, is this a new bitch? Like, is this a new girl? I have, let me double check. I, I don't even know if the voices match. Is is this really the same girl? I am having a little bit of texture in my skin. Um, coming back from Georgia. My friend told me that like sh when she first went out there, the, s the water was really messing with her skin and I literally had a reaction to the water, so that sucks, but... I ain't gonna lie, I love seeing when black women get breakout. We, we really get to see your true colors. <laughs> I push past it. I'm gonna go ahead and wake my skin uh, up. Like Mr. Jab said, uh, water is black women's kryptonite or something similar to that. <laughs> The, you know, water will really show black women's true colors. <laughs> the Farsali Rose Gold Skin Elixir. But I wanted to come on here because, y'all, this whole drama with Meg the Stallion and Tori Lange just hit home for me and it's like really scary. So I just felt like I should just come on here and like try to make an analysis and just talk about the... the How hard did she bite her lip? I'm 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 kind of really annoyed when like she's not bad looking. I'm just saying like it's it's, it's kind of annoying where like come on your lips are really fucking chapped. You could have at least maybe said fuck it. I messed up the video. Let me just try again. Ugh, this this is cringe. Aki situation that is going on. I mean, come on, like what the hell. So these are the Daily Greens by Pharmacy, and I really like this moisturizer. All right, now I'm gonna go and prime my face. So I'm just using the Benefit Professional, the Acid original one, lip balm to prime something. my face. I don't know where I've been, y'all. I never, I didn't know that they were like dating. I just thought they they get on lives together and like have a good time, right? So when I hear that they're partying with Kylie Jenner, which is kind of funny, but you know you can't really judge these Hollywood people because Hollywood's a different universe but like if you come out so hard ripping with Jordan why would you go hang out at Kylie's house 
that's just like against girl code to me because you do kind of owe your the first the first person that you're friends with that loyalty but i guess when clout and celebrity is involved then that goes out the window that just seems so fake to me I, that just seems fake i don't care how friendly meg the stallion is as we see she just is super friendly but that being super friendly with everybody is not always the best thing to do especially when you're dealing See, this this is the narrative they like to set up this whole bullshit that megan the stallion just this super friendly girl ah uh, let's keep going the kardashian clan and that's not saying anything uh about them. I, I really hate that this kind of I didn't I, I didn't watch the video in this time this is just me literally going live so I kind of hate this whole gossip thing about Meg Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez but uh we'll, we'll just put up with it but like why would Kylie want to hang out with you after you were hanging out with Jordan in the first place doesn't that seem fishy to you it seems fishy to me I would wonder like why do you want to hang out with me uh, but since again the status I guess is a completely different all that all the loyalty and the morale goes out of the window When you're sitting on um, like all that money, right? You want to be associated with the Kardashians is what I'm saying You know what I mean, but it's still tacky So that was like start number one for me towards a Meg and I really like Meg like she's one of the few artists that I've ever even bought merch for All right, so I'm gonna prime my eyes using think that he was ever armed or you know what I mean? Like I've never been in the situation where a guy had a gun or that I knew had a gun and was threatening my life. And how scary of a situation. The entire world is watching you. Everyone's judging you. Everybody wants to throw shade towards you on the shade room. Rather than sit down and, and dissect the issues, dissect what the hell happened? Why is it always a joke when it comes to black women? You know what I mean? Like she could have literally, I don't, we don't know what happened. We don't know the fine details right now, but nine times out of 10, whatever she did, didn't warrant for her getting shot. Honestly, I, I, I know Meg Thee Stallion is a liar and I'm not even going to waste my time trying to debate that. I just don't like her. I, I, I think it's, it's enough said that uh, black men are just really tired of believing black women wholeheartedly with very little truth or evidence. We're done with that. We're, we're done. Because what, what the thing is with black women, black women want that type of Emmett Till type lynch mob. And this is, this is something that they've, they've kind of slowly envied with white women. Is that black women never? I won't even say never. They, 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 they want that status. They, they want that old, you know, that old, you know, lynch mom, lynch mob status of where they can. Hey, this guy did this to me. Sick him. Do something to him. And. Black women are kind of at the ropes because there's they can get other black women to follow suit and do whatever they want them or need them to do, but when it comes to black men who they really want to control and manipulate, it's a lot harder because black men are they 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 are more inclined to not have mainstream thoughts or main mainstream point of views so you can have uh black men who are simping heavy or they just they can say that they believe Meg the stallion but you can easily find black men who are saying no i don't believe i don't believe all women i i, I just like feminism i don't trust women so that's the thing and the beauty that i love about black male politics is that you we the the, the narrative can be controlled even if there are small fragments of, you know, controlled black men, well, you can easily find 10 times more uh, black men who are free thinking. And it's just, it's disgusting to see black men, 50 Cent, who I have never liked. Okay. I never have. I've always been a job role fan. So anyways, I'm going to post and Girl, shut that shit up. Yeah. So, what he posted about Meg the Stallion, 
how classless, how classless and how rude. As if coming from a person who's been shot nine times, how could you joke about that? Because she's black. Not just because she's black, because she's a, a darker. She's not light skinned. She's oh, not exotic. Come on. You, this, 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 come on. And you not even that dark, your damn self. This, this, this is the, 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 the I'm over your stutter. The gymnastics, the, the Jedi mind trick, the, the ninjutsu, uh, the, 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 the Yu-Gi-Oh trap card that black women play flawlessly. I don't even, where the fuck did colorism even come from? Why the fuck are women who aren't even that fucking dark skin are talking about colorism? Please, light skinned women, shut the fuck up. Oh, it's a fucking joke. And again, I've never liked him, so it's not it's not surprising to me, it's just We get it, you don't like him. He's five two, he's short, he's small statured, we get it. It's just disgusting. You know, and it, it just it, it just lets you down because I just feel like Tory Lanez is a black man should if he is the one who pulled the trigger which they're not confirming or denying so nine times out of ten it was him see yeah, that that's that's why I've been telling you Negroes that black women are working their way up socially to be like white women to where no matter what happened no matter what evidence is or isn't there, as a black man, you are guilty by default. You are guilty because it happened. You, even if you allowed it to happen, you fail as a black man. So, this this is this is what I would call the white womaning of the black woman. Who the hell protect, protects black women? Who? Me. You know, coming, I have never really talked about this on my channel because I'm still like kind of embarrassed and still dealing and working. I think that he was uh, ever armed. Did I really fuck that up? They arrested. They took what, who, who and what would protect me? So it's scary because it's a tra traumatic, it's a traumatic situation for Meg. She's dealing with fame. You know, she's rising, she's growing, affects her image. And not only that, like, she's probably heartbroken because that was her boyfriend. Who fucking shot her? Like, who shot her? Are you kidding? How traumatic is this? Now, mind you, this video was taken before the Meg Thee Stallion 2020 interview. So, majority of the people, you know, this is proof that black women thought she was dating Tory Lanez. So... With Meg Thee Stallion trying to pull rank and try to act like she didn't fuck with this dude, is cap. And people want to laugh and joke at her pain. I understand, you know, in the situation, things get heated when you have alcohol going and whatever other drugs or whatever is going on or whatever they do in Hollyland. It should never get to the point where a weapon is pulled and a woman, and a woman. Okay. <sighs> Megan would be in jail if she did something. If it was pulling out a nigga, oh, they wouldn't give a fuck. Oh, they, they would actually egg it on. You gonna let that bitch ass nigga push you around? Yeah, whatever. Hey, so I'm pretty sure she wasn't trying to shoot him. I'm pretty sure his life was not in danger. Like I said before, black women never deal with absolutes. Um, and so they'll play these little games where they'll just be like, they'll just, just deny plausibility. There's they, just no way. There was, there was just no way that um, Tory Lanez felt threatened or there there was something said or done that offended Tory Lanez. Nah, he, you know, Tory Lanez should have just been a, a, a go easy black man and uh, he should have just sat there and, and take whatever uh, offense offense um he he was hurled with pretty sure he was not threatened he he was strapped and meg has her own money i'm sure there was no liability in his part like i'm i'm sure he was not in fear of his life to pull a trigger hypothetically since they're not confirming or denying that it was him but he is in jail so 
you know, he looks guilty right now in my eyes. I asked who protects your eyes. You are, he is only guilty because he's a black man. That's it. You never give second thought. You never give reasoning or uh, a neutral argument. He's just innocent. He, I mean, he's, he's just guilty. He's just guilty. Black women, because I feel as if black men have failed me over and over in my life personally. Not my fucking problem. And seeing the situation at hand with Meg the Salian, I feel like black men are failing her as well. What, what, what the fuck do I owe Meg Thee Stallion? I don't owe Meg Thee Stallion a damn thing. We are in this whole civil rights movement. We're trying to fight for Brianna. We're trying to fight for... This, this is another trap card. This is another Yu-Gi-Oh trap card that black women pull. Is this Black Lives Matter card. To where black women who literally sit on their ass for the most part, will look at another black woman on TV or on Twitter or whatever, and they'll just say, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Black Lives Matter activist. And I'm fighting for all these black men. And then women like her, who just sit on their ass, will try to challenge black men on an issue that has nothing to do with racism. And then charge that to the game and tell us, we're undeserving of their fucking support. Bitch, I never asked for fucking Black Lives Matter. Just like the majority of the black men. We never asked for that shit. We never asked you to march. Hell, I know a lot of black men who don't even support George Floyd. So I, I don't know what you're marching for. I, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't even know why. That's on you. You, you, you want to march? You, you want to do all this? That, that's on you. Elijah, we're fighting for everybody, but... It now, you would really... See, see this is what happens with black women like her who are like... They don't, they don't do the research. They don't, they don't do the research. And honestly, you don't even need to do a lot of... You don't even need to do any or a lot of research, honestly. You don't you don't do the research to where you have no rage you don't you don't have no outrage when it was revealed that Black Lives Matter was allocating the funds for personal gains to buy a mansion and to sip fucking wine. No outrage, right? No no outrage, right? You, you, you didn't you didn't even notice that, right? And then you wanna you wanna proxy assimilate yourself to to the to the to Black Lives Matter to act as if you was doing something. But nine times out of ten, not you were probably just sitting on your ass. It seems like it's a joke when it comes to black women. I mean, number one, Bjarna Taylor's officers still are in Florida chilling, kicking it, while everybody else, uh, you know, is starting to die down. All of the animosity seems to be dying down a little bit, but because why, when it comes to black women, no one cares. See, this is bullshit. And this same argument was used a couple years ago. I want to say eight. I think that's what I did with uh, Corinne Gaines. That situation where Black Lives Matter disappeared, and I, th I think I think Corinne Gaines died probably a couple weeks after. Uh, Philando Castile, I think so. I think it was around the same time. I know it was shortly after. I don't know how close, but um, there was a lot of black feminists fake angry um, in, in assuming that black men just somehow told Black Lives Matter not to march for current gains because she dated a thug or she was she had mental issues and it's like Black Lives Matter is run by majority of lesbians and niggas in the LGBT community. Like we we don't we literally don't even have a face. We don't, we, we literally don't even have a straight face. Uh, pun intended. On Black Lives Matter, yet you're telling us and assuming that we told a bunch of fags and, and, and queers and lesbians that um, don't march for Corinne Gaines because she doesn't deserve it and she's a woman.
a black woman at that. Hey, if, if you believe that stupid shit, whatever, man. There is that empathy where who protects and stands up for black women? Are we just appropriated and laughed at? Pretty much. You know, people have gone outside their way to make black women feel as if their brown skin isn't even pretty. Like, we'll be loving ourselves, and then here comes somebody else with some shade. Myth. 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 I've already made, I already have videos coming up. They may have been already posted, but I've at least posted a whole bunch of B, uh, a good bit of BBL videos, and I also have a new surgery. This really isn't new, but this is a common trend amongst black women in general, regardless of your FBA or not, of black women getting nose surgery. Rhinoplasty? I just call these bitches rhino girls. So there's there's a new wave there's a wave of rhino girls uh getting nose jobs to look Korean. And so a lot of, and yes, a lot of these girls or a good bit of these girls go to Korea for nose jobs. So they can look more Asian or whatever. I'm like, who the fuck is looking at Asian women for their noses? But um, this this is this is a myth that black men are bullying black women to to do all these crazy things. Like nobody's bullying you to get a BBL. No one's bullying you to get a nose job. We'll just be minding our business, loving our melanated skin that we've been taught. A lot of y'all hate y'all melanated skin. I'll, even for the non FBA women, bleaching. No black man. No black man. Is telling y'all to bleach. Not think it's beautiful with all of the health benefits and all the freaking bomb shit that comes along with having melanated skin. So it's just like, why are we being bullied? And who stands up for us? Not saying that we are victims. We literally are not victims. We are so triumphant in so many ways. So many ways that always goes. Black women have to be better at better than black men at something. And this is a little reminder to them that, well, we're not we're not really victims, victims. We're actually still better than you in something. Okay, okay. Overlooked because they want to perpetuate this ghetto welfare queen. That just is not black women. It really is not. There may be a small percentage, but we are the fastest. Bullshit. Bullshit, all right? You are not going to tell me. That, uh, that the majority of black women are running Fortune 500 companies, making six figures, living in gated communities, while you're only, you're, you're literally going to tell me like 10% of black women on fucking welfare. Get the fuck out of here. A group of entrepreneurs and business owners in the U United States. Yes, with, with uh, you know, they're like, what, the fastest failing demographic of business, business owners, uh, with employees that are just themselves. So the fuck what? Everyone fails to talk about, and it just seems like it's it's more acceptable. And really, truth be told, most of y'all so-called businesses are just hair. It's it's, it, it's just being the middle man or the middle woman for hair products that you're getting from Korea and India. So it's it's not like you guys are innovators in some type of bullshit like uh, energy, um, um. Part, uh, automobile parts or military contractors, uh, aviation, automobiles, or or or, or, or um, tool you know tools or whatever. It, it, it's not like your businesses are striving in those areas. Majority of what you guys have is basically just fucking hair. Well, to hate black women or throw shade or not think of us as beautiful and and smart, and and overlook us and, and try to clown us and joke, make jokes of us. So it just is unfortunate. Everyone's looking at like what Meg did wrong or what happened, rather than fucking looking at the fact that she got shot. She got shot. That is outrageous. I mean, and are they like, she's too friendly. So I can like, honestly. There, there we go. They just, this, this is just sprinkling. That's just this, the white womaning of the black woman. She's so friendly. 
I guess I would agree and say that she is a little bit too friendly for my liking. At first, I thought it was cool because it was bringing the rap game together and stuff. And, like, you know, she's being friendly with all the rappers, people in her niche, you know, bringing all the, the rappers together. I thought that that was cute. But this hanging out with Jordan Woods and then going back and hanging out with Kylie Jenner just seems a little fake and dangerous. Like, I don't know who in their right mind does that. Because if my friend did that, you know, you wouldn't be my friend anymore. I don't care if you are new to celebrity. I don't care. And the way Meg comprehends things is she just says, basically, as she says in her lyrics, uh, you can't handle me. Nobody's about to tell me what I'm going to do. She's very rebellious. She is very strong-willed and minded. She's probably not taking advice from her publicist or her close friends because she just, you know, she thinks she's... When black women don't listen to their advisors, what the fuck do you expect every everyday black men to do? Like I said before, we're not going to fight you. We're not going to fight you to make right decisions. And Meg Thee Stallion is a perfect example. Because I've seen a lot of people talk and criticize her for all her fuck-ups. And all her failed collaborations that really didn't go anywhere. You, you really expect us to hold your hand and make you do right. Oh, no, 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 no do whatever she wants to do and i understand i've been there i've been 25 i've been there i understand but 25 how fucking old is this girl damn she's she, uh, she's speaking like it's light like it just happened or like like it happened a while ago i'm gonna say i'm gonna say she's 32 she looked really young like she looked like she could be 15 but i'm, I'm gonna say 32 same time you are going to grow to wish that you would have listened to some of your mentors your friends you know uh and and take the the, the safer route i guess i don't know I, she was in the super bougie neighborhood like how much safer can you get yes i understand but like if this man has gone to the extreme to shoot you i'm sure there's been other red flags before this i'm sure there has it always is uh, he's a black man that's a red flag a red flag enough place tomorrow i don't think that he just freaked out and shot her off this, off GP or whatever people say. Dance, bitch, dance. I think something else had to transpire, you know? So you gotta look at the red flags, no matter how good, you know, things are in the relationship, no matter what holds you, you have to know your worth. And Meg, like, you're a celebrity, like, everybody wants her. She's like the it girl right now. Why would you hang on to the abusive relationship everybody's saying? Like, why would you hang on? Because it's more than just what people think it's hard to break free of habits especially meg you know she's mourning her mom her mom died she's new to the celebrity life she don't know who's real and who's fake and if you find something that you think is real it's going to be hard to let go of that so i don't blame her it's just it's it's sad so i'm using my fenty beauty pro filter foundation in 385 so for me growing thank god I, I, I she really got bad skin. Up in the neighborhood that I grew up in, um, I didn't have, I didn't grow up with a lot of money. We were poor, actually. I'm not even gonna front. Like, it's hard for me to talk about. Um, but just a little bit about my childhood. Um, as I'd stated in a previous video, my mom only dates black men. Right, and I did not have. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's what that's what made me giddy, right? You're fucking with me, right? That was supposed to make me giddy, right? Are you really for real? And I'm I'm so tired of black women. This is yet a, another Yu-Gi-Oh trap card that black women pull because they like to do this bull bullshit. Like, oh my god, I own, I know somebody who only dated black men. We're, we're your own you're, you're you're the standard we love you okay stop cause when I've already done this before when I, when I went to TikTok and I looked at all the videos of black women showing their so called love for black men guess who I saw guess who was the archetype guess who was the only archetype pretty boys um Really, truth, but I, I, I would erase that. It was really just mostly dark-skinned black men who were like 6'2 and above. Who played sports. And then, if black women want to act spicy and do something new, it was light-skinned men or, or 
coming in, and that 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 was, that was the alternative. It was just dark skin niggas who play basketball and light skinned pretty boys. Not one girl on TikTok talked about black nerds or or, or guys average height. So, as a non-select black man, I really don't give a fuck about you only dating black men because that doesn't do anything for me. So what? You only date guys, black men who are six two and above. How the fuck? You you expect me to do backflips? Oh my god! It's black love. It's so true. It's so genuine. Whatever. Best stepdad growing up, I saw every negative thing that could be presented in a black man. Every oh, single. Oh god! It, it honestly. Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! Fuck it! I don't. I don't even care. Negative that you would think. He was. Let me guess. He was gay. He was. He was uneducated. He was gay. He uh, was abusive. He listened to uh, rap music. Um, he. Was just, he was just so angry and bitter and, and just self-hating. He he was a colorist. Um, he hated women. He was broke as hell. He, um, you know, he, whatever. I saw besides heavy drug use or alcoholism, everything else was bad. Um, rather than feeling protected by my stepdad, I always felt as if I was a victim. Uh, I was always doing something wrong, and he was never there. I will never support or just kind of belittle someone because, because of child abuse. This is this is she was a child. I'll I'll go easy. She was a child, and you can kind of see in the whites of her eyes that this is still hurting and traumatizing her very much. And I'll go easy. I'll go easy. These girls are suffer, suffering from PTSD. It's sad, but you bitches really need to get your head on straight and stop acting like black men are a monolith, especially when you don't date what? Educated lames. For me, as a father figure, he was just my mom's husband, and he was very mean, verbally abusive, and I didn't already didn't have a relationship with my own dad. I was the only one who didn't have a relationship with their dad. And then this male figure was brought in and he did more damage than good. He actually made me not like black men at all. I just saw every. Really? Have you, have you, have you ever dated an educated lame like the, the black nerds in the library? You know, those guys that just, you know, just minding their own business. Uh, those guys struggling hard to get A's. W what's your reason to hate them? Huh? You're quiet. Wait, what's your, what's your reason to hate them? Or, co or compare them to your stepdad? You know, they ain't, they're not slinging around their dicks trying to fuck every girl in school. So, why why compare him? Why compare those guys to your dad, to your stepdad, or even to your real father? Yeah, I have nothing to say. Single negative, and that picture in my mind just was disgusting. So not only did I have that stereotype in my mind about black men, I also wasn't light skinned I also didn't have like the best clothes. I was flat chested. You know what I mean? So oh, black. Oh no. And this will be made to part two.